I will discuss open source interactive MR simulation in a browser, in particular the educational block simulator, which is a software that was recently re-implemented. You see it down here. And I'm Lars Hansen from the Danish Research Center for Magnetic Resonance and the Technical University of Denmark. So the motivation for this is that the, the block equations, they underlie all MRI, but they are somewhat challenging to teach and learn. And for that reason, uh, there's a, a tool for you to help you, and that is the block simulator for MRI education, and that was recently uh, rewritten. It is open source graphical interactive MR simulation tool. You can open the link you see here and run it yourself. And it provides visualization and exploration of basic MR techniques directly in a browser. It is based on HTML5 and uh, JavaScript, and it is also available as an Android uh, app. The equations of motions for nuclear spins is the basis. Spins do not only process in the B0 field, they also deface due to field inhomogeneity, and then they uh, relax back to equilibrium uh, due to the random nuclear interactions between the magnetic dipoles. Hence, we end up with the block equations describing precession at the Lama frequency proportional to the field strength, and on a longer time scale, there is longitudinal relaxation back towards equilibrium M0 on a time scale T1 and transversal relaxation back to a different equilibrium zero on a timescale T2. I will now visualize some special cases of particular interest using a simulator it runs directly in a browser, and you are invited to try doing the simulations yourself. I have a few slides describing the layout of this so-called block simulator that you see here. However, I will not go through these slides since I will demonstrate the simulator instead. In the demonstrations, you will see the dynamics described by the block equations for fields that are manipulated interactively. This includes the polarizing field B0 and the RF field B1. You here see a magnetization vector processing in a magnetic field. It has a longitudinal component along the direction of the B0 field that is here vertical. And it has a transversal component in the orthogonal plane, here illustrated by the shadow on the floor. The MR signal is shown in the upper graph. The red curve is the coil voltage generated by the precession, and the white constant curve is the signal amplitude corresponding to the length of the shadow on the floor. Let's start in equilibrium, where the magnetization is longitudinal. With an RF pulse on resonance, the magnetization is rotated into the transversal plane. In real life, T1 and T2 are sample properties, but since this is a simulation, we have flexibility. Relaxation is currently disabled, for example, but we can now introduce it. Setting T2 to 6 seconds, for example, makes the transverse magnetization decay away on this time scale. Setting T1 to 8 seconds makes the longitudinal magnetization independently approach M0 on this longer time scale. For both kinds of magnetization, the approach to equilibrium is exponential. But remember that longitudinal and transverse magnetization have different equilibrium values. We can now give a second RF pulse and see T1 and T2 relaxation in action simultaneously. Different tissues have different relaxation times. In the lower left, you can choose an initial condition of mixed matter. Giving a 90 degree pulse, you can see magnetization vectors for white matter, blue matter, and green matter. They each return to equilibrium on different time scales, and it is left as an exercise for you to determine these. For each tissue type, you can determine whether T1 and T2 is relatively long or relatively short. When you have determined the relative T1s and T2s, you can try to establish the relative proton densities that are proportional to the tissue's equilibrium magnetizations. Here you see precession once again. Let's change to a frame of reference rotating at the Lama frequency. You still see the precession, but from a different point of view. 
This is reflected in the rotation of the floor. In this rotating frame of reference, the magnetization is now stationary, so the B0 field appears to be transformed away. I now switch back to the stationary frame of reference and choose the equilibrium initial condition. Let's see how a 90 degree pulse affects the magnetization. The purple bar is the torque from the B1 field, which indicates in which direction the magnetization is pushed by the RF pulse. At resonance, these pushes consistently increase the excitation angle. Let's see it again. I start an equilibrium and apply an oscillating B1 field sufficiently long to rotate the magnetization 90 degrees. Now let's see the same 90 degree pulse in the, in the frame of reference rotating at the RF frequency. First I go to equilibrium and change the frame of reference. Then I apply the 90 degree pulse and you will see the effective field vector as a blue bar. You see that the magnetization processes around the effective field vector, which is transversal since the pulse is applied on resonance. If I apply another 90 degree pulse, I can rotate the magnetization further, for example to invert it. In general, the RF field is not applied on resonance. During slice selection, for example, a field gradient is applied, so some nuclei will be on resonance, while others will not. I will introduce a spatial distribution of nuclei and a field gradient as shown for the human head. Think of the row of nuclei that you see here as those between the ears, for example. A constant gradient is applied, but that is not visible until excitation that I initiate now. I pause the simulation here after excitation to examine the result. Since the field varied between positions during excitation, the effective field vector is pointed in different directions for different nuclei, and only on resonance was it transversal. That was in the middle, and those nuclei are therefore excited 90 degrees. Above and below resonance, the effective field vectors was near parallel to B0, and the corresponding nuclei were therefore excited little. This is how slice selection works. Please note that we get little signal from the slice, however, since the directions vary between positions. We can remove the so-called phase roll or phase ramp by inverting the gradient briefly as indicated in the sequence diagram. I invert the gradient and resume simulation until the nuclei are in phase. You now see the resulting slice profile on the floor. I zoom out to show that it is sync-like even though 90 degrees is not a small tip angle. To give a better impression of the effective field vector, I will now show so-called adiabatic inversion used to apply 180 degree pulses fairly independent of the B0 and B1 amplitudes. The idea is to start the RF pulse far from resonance and then do a frequency sweep through resonance. I start an equilibrium and go to the rotating frame. Then I adjust the RF frequency far from resonance. I now turn on a weak B1 field. Since it is applied far off resonance, the effective field vector is near longitudinal initially and the magnetization processes around it. When I ramp up the B1 field amplitude gradually, the magnetization will therefore follow the effective field vector. Now I am applying a strong field far off resonance. I now gradually sweep the field through resonance and finally decrease the amplitude. The result is an approximate inversion of the magnetization, which at all points stayed close to the effective field vector. Ta-da!